So guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and today we are going to be going over the tactical recreation of Louis van Gaal's 95 season. If you guys are enjoying these tactic videos, be sure to leave a like on this one, subscribe to the channel and do follow all the social medias in the description because this is the best place to get your suggestions across and also it's a good way to interact. But let's get in to the test and phase of this video and recreate this masterpiece. But before we do that, I'm going to quickly go over, obviously, this season. For people that aren't aware and might be confused to why you are seeing multiple Van Hull tactics on this channel, because obviously we've done one with the Netherlands squad throughout the World Cup, this one is going to look a lot different. And this is because it is based around the 1994-95 to 95 season he had with Ajax. And this is a season where they won the Dutch League, they won the Dutch Super Cup, they won the Dutch on the Dutch Champions League, UEFA Champions League, also nearly collecting an 80% win rate, as you can see here in the Dutch League. They had some really good players as well, which definitely adds to why this sort of team did get remembered alongside of the success they had. You've obviously got the likes of Van der Sar, you got De Boer, you got some really, I mean, Edgar David is a player which I always, always remember, mainly because of the Maybe because of the glasses, but that aside, that's that's not the main thing of it. Overmars, um, Ricard, you've got loads of people in here. I mean, it's literally endless talent. Cliver, the man on the thumbnail, it's literally Seedorf as well. It was one of probably the best teams you're going to see for a while. And I'm pretty sure this will always be in the Ajax's fans' heads pretty much forever because it was such a good team. And obviously, you know... They could have easily won the quadruple, to be fair, as well. But obviously, do fall in short here. But it was a team which definitely will always be remembered. And I can see why you guys did want it to be recreated. And today, I think we've done a very good job of recreating that tactic. Now, this is purely designed to replicate the system. So there are things you could definitely change in the game to get a slightly better performance, better results. And I will be going over them things as we progress through the video. But we're going to kick things off now by going through the testing. And today, we've tested with, obviously, Ajax. We've tested with one of his previous sides, Manchester United, and also a team which I just like testing with, which is going to be Barcelona. Now, with this video as well, and this tactic more importantly, because it is three at the back with a higher defensive line, you can expect to concede a few goals here and there. It's not traditionally the most solid style of playing on FM, but you can get results of it if played correctly. You've got the right players and you're willing to make the odd tweak here and there. And we did get really good results. So let's go over now and kick things off with Manchester United. So this is going to be Manchester United. Obviously, we simulated the whole season. All the tests are done with simulating. I have seen a lot of comments asking that recently, so I thought I'd clear it up now. Um, now and then I might play the odd final, but if I do, I will show you the full gameplay. But here we go. We're going to kick things off then. So we won the Europa League. Unfortunately, we did fall a little bit short in the Premier League by three points. It is going to be Liverpool coming out and actually finishing above us with Manchester City taking third and Newcastle in fourth place. We scored 107 goals and conceded 40. So not the best, best defensively, but reasonably good and obviously good enough to get us into a very good finish in the Premier League. In terms of the squad, we are going to get a very good understanding here of where the goals sort of come from. Now, the good thing about this tactic is if you've not got a really, really world-class striker. So in this case scenario, I know the assistant was using Martial up top and possibly Anthony. The shallow striker will come in and replace them goals, get up the field, score the goals and get assists. And that's exactly what Bruno Fernandes done. With 41 goals and 18 assists, you've got Rashford with 32 goals, 18 assists. You've got Anthony with 31 goals, 11 assists. You've got Ericsson, 18 goals and 26 assists. You've got Sancho with 16 goals, 17 assists. Weghorst, 13 and 2. Martial, 10 and 3. Um, Fred even contributing heavily here with 9 goals and 17 assists. So a lot of goals are being scored from all areas of the field and goals are being created by players all over the field too. And that is the real good thing about this. Obviously, you don't have wing backs in this system, so you're not really going to be using them. As you can see down here, you know, Dallo not actually even playing the game because he can only play as a wing back. And when you don't have wing backs, you obviously have to create your chances from other areas. Obviously, wing backs are a big part of modern football nowadays. A lot of chances do come from them fullback areas. But since we don't have them, they have to be created through the midfield and the wide plays. And that's exactly what this tactic does do very well. And as you can see, we didn't have a flawless all and out striker. Rashford was on the left. Martial was on the left up front sometimes. Um, Anthony was on the right up top. So we didn't have a cemented sort of striker position and if we did have a Ronaldo for example like United did used to have possibly Bruno's goals wouldn't have been as high but it just shows that Bruno or any shallow striker is more than capable of replacing the goals that you miss 
Going into the data hub then, general performance, 2.82 goals per game and just conceding over a goal, which I will take, considering this tactic is by no means meant for being a defensive sort of tactic at all. It done very well in this division. Good car and pass completions at an 88.4%. So very good there and pretty much doing exactly what you'd expect this tactic to do. And we then go over to Barcelona and this is going to be a completely different comparison because this is what happens when you have got a world-class striker that can score loads and loads of goals. Obviously Lewandowski, in terms of ability, we are purely based on soft stars. You put him in the Haaland category, the Mbappe category, the Harry Kane, etc, etc. You know, the real goal scorers of this game. And he can score goals, as we've seen. We managed to win the Spanish division. Not the best display in the Spanish Cups, but we won it so comfortably in the division. I'm more than happy to obviously show you this side of things. 124 goals scored and a lot better at defending, only conceding 16. Now, with this team, obviously, we are going to be seeing a lot of the goals coming from Lewandowski, and therefore, it means that the rest of the goals are sort of going to be lower from the rest of the players, because when you've got a player like Lewandowski, like a Harry Kane, like a Haaland, you typically will always go to them to get the goals, because you know they can put the ball in the back of the net, which is exactly what this guy done, scoring 93 goals. Fernand Torres coming in with 14, 14 from Pedri, then it does drop off a little bit. You've got Fatty coming in with 9, 9 coming in from Rafinha, and Rauhal coming in with 8, 7 coming in for Kese, then there is a little bit of a drop off in terms of assists. You've got 26 for Pedri, Torres 17, 17 for Frankie De Jong, Patty with 13, 12 coming in from, from Rafinha, 9 coming in from Usman Dembele. Then there is a little bit of a drop off again. So this also does show that it can work both ways. Say you've got a striker that is prolific, can score lots and lots of goals, they will easily take the lead, they'll score the goals, and they will get chances upon chances. But if you're also in a situation like Manchester United where you haven't got the best striker necessarily, you can rely on your shallow striker to pick up the slack and get majority of the goals so it's a real good it's a real good system either way in terms of the general performance of this one it is really impressive this one 89.4 percent pass completion over three goals a game and under half a goal conceded per game so this is slightly the different end of the scale obviously we've probably got one of the best defenses if not the best defense in this division possibly Real Madrid actually but very very good defense in this division and obviously it is a slightly more comfortable league so if you are playing in a situation like this this is what you you can expect to see and we absolutely dominated the division as you can see here 103 points Real Madrid only managed to get to 86 so a very comfortable display and that leaves one last test which is going to be with Ajax and this is going to be the Ajax save now if anyone does know of any databases we can use please do tell me because I would love to test with an old database and obviously use the players which we talked about at the start of the video um, but unfortunately I couldn't find any so let me know if there are if there are sorry any going about and I'll make sure that we include them in future videos like it would have been good for the Sir Alex Ferguson one we could have used the old United team etc etc but Let's kick things off then. So it was a very successful season. We won the treble also, but not the Champions League. Unfortunately, it's going to be AC Milan, just a little bit too dominant for us. And we couldn't come out on top in the quarterfinals. We scored 82 goals across the season and only conceded 18. So quite impressed there. So it'll be Steven Berghaus coming in with 42 goals. Urien Timber coming in with a 7.64 match rating overall. And Dusan Tadic with 20 assists. A very comfortable season as Feyenoord do take second place with 77 points. But it's going to be Ajax, obviously us with 85 so a very comfortable season there and it's going to be the squad that is going to back this up as well quite a tight knit squad for Ajax I have noticed by the way so it'll be Berghaus coming in with 42 goals a very very good player there so um, 20 goals coming in there from Broby I believe one of their newer signings or newer slightly newer signings 90 coming in from Kudus Tadic with 14 goals Bergvine coming in with 13 and there is a little bit of a drop off um but scoring more than enough goals to win a division, so that's all that matters, to be honest. You then got Dusan Tadic with 20 goals, 14 for Bergvine, Kudus coming in with 13, 12 coming in for Kenneth Taylor, Berghaus coming in with 12 assists, 7 for Klaassen, Jensen with 7, 4 for Gonsi Sal, Alvarez with 4, Timber with 4, even some of the defenders getting involved, which is always good to see. Um, but I never knew this was sort of how tight-knit this Ajax squad was. There isn't tons and tons of depth at all. Um, obviously, some of these... Players who are traditionally fullbacks are having to play for depth, etc., etc. When there are when that were injuries, I guess, which is a little bit annoying because we possibly could have done even better. But it is what it is. In terms of the data hub, general performance: two point four one goals per game. So to be honest, possibly could have expected a little bit more in this division, but. 
We still dominated pretty much every game we went into, only conceded 0.53, and we are approaching towards a pass completion of 90%. So you can't complain too much when you've when you've got that much of the ball. And, you know, when I say that much of the ball, you will be seeing the possession stats as well. But a very dominant display. And to back that up, we'll go to Ajax here quickly. Go to the Dutch division, go to the stats, and this is where we can get a real good look at what we were producing this season. So most points per game, most goals, quite comfortable there. Most shots for, very comfortable there. Fewest shots against, very comfortable there. And this is a standout one. 64% possession, obviously two more percent than second place, and 64% to have across any season with any team is still very impressive and i think it says a lot about what this team is about as you can see here we average an 89 percent as well so it is really good and it just shows that potentially some of these you know when you are seeing not as many goals go in it might be a mixture of good defending but also the fact that you have got so much of the ball and obviously when you've got the ball the other team can't score so it sort of adds up. It could be a mixture of great defending, but also the fact that you've got so much of the ball, the other team can't do anything anyway. Most dribbles made, we dominated that stat line as well, and obviously the fewest conceded and most clean sheets. So a very, very impressive season with Ajax. I'm pretty sure the Ajax fans will be happy with that one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pick out a couple of games and watch some goals and see exactly how you can expect to see the chances go in. The first one is going to be in the Dutch Cup final against PSV Eidenhoven, which did go to extra time, by the way. We are the play of players, the team that do go 1-0 up with a fantastic ball from Timber, I believe, and a fantastic finish from Kudus. However, they do find a way back into the game, which was a little bit frustrating, as it was pretty much in the 90th minute, which pushed it to extra time. Just... I don't know how he was on side there. He had so much space, it was unreal. And unfortunately, the keeper does leave him quite an easy finish after parrying into a danger area. Timber again, I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this carefully because when you've got this system playing, the three at the back in particular, and they the other team allows one of the centre-backs to drive into this midfield, look at how many people we have got forward, how many options we've got that we could go to and the confusion it causes for the other team. We've got two players behind here, so we are contributing so many players forward. It is very difficult for the other team to obviously defend it. You, as you can see from this point here, you've got two four players making great runs. You've also got a wide option here, which we can just see off the screen. We've obviously got midfield options if we needed it as well. There's so many options, and also there would be a player around this down area here. So we're going to play the ball over the top, which goes through to that player who actually sort of drifted in narrower into Berghaus, who just, it's a quite an easy finish. And that was going to be the goal to put us 2-1 up. And there is another one to sort of cement the game. As we go down the left-hand side again here with Berghaus, bit of skill, bit of trickery. Is he going to cut it back? He puts it in, a great ball in into Kudas, who sort of worms his way in the middle of everyone and does tuck it in and pretty much guarantees us the final. In a game which we did definitely deserve to win, I mean, we had 71% of the ball against a side like PSV. Just shows that we're not only doing this against the smaller sides in the, in the division, we're doing it against the powerhouses. We are also going to show you some highlights from the semi-finals of one of the Champions League games. And the reason why I'm going to show you the semi-final not the final is because the final was a 1-0. Not too many goals, not too much action. This one had eight goals in the game and seven of them come from us. So this is going to be quite exciting. And this is going to look at this goal by Fred, by the way. What a strike that is. And that is why... I never, or not never, but in this system, I don't have to work the ball into the box on because I feel like you get so many more chances. So many more goals, sorry, more than chances. Not having it on with this style because you naturally have so many players forward that you want your players to be allowed to have a pop shot because you create so many chances anyway. So you may as well let your players have the opportunity to have a little bit of freedom, have a shot here and there. And obviously you can see some of the benefits inside of what? 10 minutes from Fred. We're going to build up again here. Varane into Ericsson using every area of the pitch possible. As Sancho goes through, little finesse. It is going to be just a little side foot finish into the near post against his former side. And that is going to be 2-0 up. A more direct approach here is Bruno Fernandes. I want you to watch Jaden Sancho here. He plays the ball over the top and look at the commitment here. He drives back into it. Bruno sees him. He hits it. It is a lucky finish in the end because it does bounce off a Dortmund centre half. But that link up play between the shallow striker and the right hand side is so, so good. Sancho again out on the right hand side into Bruno. Linking up again very well. And it's a clear ball into the box into Anthony and it's an easy run it's an easy pass for Bruno to be honest and we're seeing how lethal Bruno actually was in this season we then go again here with Bruno in the midfield sort of a volley pass out wide into Rashford who finds the run of Anthony who's going to go by himself 
Keeper possibly could have done a little bit better, in my opinion, there. It was down the middle, but it's not purely his fault. It was a little bit of quality from Rashford as well. This is the only weakness we have seen from this game alone. It's going to be the space that was exploited there as a Demi goes through and as an unstoppable finish into the sort of near post to the right-hand side. And that is just where I expect the centre-half to be a little bit wider. But unfortunately, in that scenario, he wasn't. We build up again, though, to sort of bounce back and, you know, keep on dominating the game. Some good pass and play here as Fred gets a very good ball into Rashford. And he's sort of it's an off turn and something i noticed a lot with this system um i don't know why whether it was because naturally we just had a lot of players up there or whatever the reason was but because we didn't have that work the ball into the box we were seeing a lot of pop shots and some of them were going in some of them were going wide but when you're getting when you're hitting shots like that it is always good to see there is another goal in it for us here, though, as they do fail to clear it. Bruno picks it up into Ericsson. It's going to be into Anthony, and he just chips it, kind of chips it, more just power hits it, right across into the far left corner. It was a very dominating first leg of, obviously, the Europa League arm tie. Against the Dortmund side, it was full strength as well. There's no excuses there from them, obviously, their best team out. And we've come out and absolutely thumped them. So a very dominant display. The stats are all in our favour. Again, 70% of the ball against a side like Dortmund just shows exactly this tactic can do it against anyone. So guys, it's now going to be your favourite part of the video because we are going to be breaking down this tactic. If you guys are enjoying the video so far and you want to see more tactics, be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and do turn on notifications. If you want to stay in touch more, you can follow all of my social medias in the description. That's where I post when I'm going to go live, any video ideas I've got potentially and also giveaways. So they're really worthwhile and you can find them all in the description. But Let's break down the Van Hal 95 tactic. So it is going to be a 3 1 2 1 3, believe it or not, is what is what it's based around. Now, obviously, you could see you could call it several things. Um various three at the back formations it looks like but it is very unique in the way that it works so we're going to spend a little bit of time going over it and also going over how you can make it more defensive or if you need to chase a goal and then if you guys do need to you know what to do so we're going to kick things off then in possession you want positive mentality by the way in possession you want wide that is one thing you should never change because you do need that width in this system Play out of defense, slightly shorter, slightly higher. Mixed crosses. Now, this page alone, there's a lot of stuff you can do. If you're chasing a game, you could change the mentality to attack and possibly you could look to run at defense, be more expressive. Obviously, don't do all this stuff at the same time. Do it gradually. Only do this stuff at the same time if you are desperate for a goal. I'm talking 10 minutes, you want to chase, chase, chase. You could look to shoot on sight. Not really worth hitting early crosses, in my opinion, on this one. But that's just a few things you could do to really, you know, spark up this tactic. In transition, you've got counter press, hold shape, distribute to the centre backs and take short goal kicks. Not too much there. Out of possession. Now, this is where we're going to see it. Now, this is actually set to a high defensive line. Um, and what you want to do with this one is this line is very, it's between standard and higher because if you're replicating at 100 percent i would honestly recommend having obviously the higher line because it would replicate it pretty much down to a t but this is what we tested on by the way we did test with a higher line so they're the results we did get just to make that very clear we had more often on the trigger press and prevent your goalkeeper distribution now one thing i'll say is if you guys want to um potentially seal out a game say for i'm going to think of a scenario say you're one nil up you've got 20 minutes left 30 minutes left you're trying to just ease off the game be a bit more calmer the first thing you look to do is definitely change this mentality to possibly balance i wouldn't go any more than that if you're just trying to seal out a game if you're really trying to just defend and you don't you, you don't care about the amount of pressure you've got on you you're just trying to like thump along and get rid of it and obviously you could go to cautious if not defensive but out of possession you could look to definitely drop this to a standard defensive line if you're just trying to just naturally see the game out if you are trying to completely you know throw bodies at everyone just sit at the back just you know i'm talking panic stations last two minutes of the game you definitely could drop this to a lower defensive line drop this to sort of a mid block and then have the stay on feet um you could look to drop off more as well and invite the pressure on and just you know just hope you don't concede but as as anyone does know anyway the more sort of which you do with this area if you go over the top you are doing nothing to yourself but inviting more pressure on and sometimes this actually affects you more than benefits you so that's just a little heads up but it is something you definitely could look to do but in terms of the player roles then the sweeper keeper on support is on take more risks. The ball playing defender is on, on defend, by the way. Stay wider, take more risks and hold position. We then have a libero, a very crucial part of this team and something which I don't think you should consider switching because it works so well. 
dribble more and take more risks on support. And this one, basically, he just sits a little bit behind the other two. He's just, he just, you know, picks up any loose balls and it just works so well because when you are playing a three in the back system, sometimes you are vulnerable to the odd ball going over the top or to a counter attack. So having someone just behind the other two does actually help a real lot. We then have another ball playing defender on defend, stay wider, take more risks and hold position. We then have the staple of the team, the, the one position, apart from the libero, two positions in this team, or actually three positions. I'd say the three positions I would not change at all um, would be the shadow striker, the halfback, and the libero. But the halfback is obviously, it's pretty much somewhat, I'm going to read this out here, is somewhat a mixture between a defensive midfielder and a very aggressive centre-back that does push up. And having this guy in here does help out a lot. Having him on defend, take more risks, dribble less and hold position. We then obviously have two more midfield players in this system. We have a box-to-box -box midfielder on the left on support, pass it shorter, move into channels and run from position. And on the right-hand side, we have a Carrillo on support, take more risks and stay wider. We then have the wingers. We have on the left-hand side an inverted winger on attack, pass it shorter, dribble more, cut inside with the ball and get further forwards. And on the right-hand side, we've got a winger on attack, pass it shorter, dribble more, run wide with the ball, cross more often, cross from the byline, get further forwards and stay wider. And then a shadow striker on attack, roam from position, dribble more, take more risks, get further forwards and move into channels. Now, I would definitely not change the shadow striker because as you've seen, it does play a big role in this team. If you've got a striker that possibly isn't the best or maybe injured or just not performing, the shadow striker will replace them goals as we've seen with Bruno and it, it's just a real real good thing and if you have got a striker as well that is performing they work so well alongside each other so I would definitely not look to change that under any circumstance we then have the last position and advance forward on attack and he is simply told to move into channels but guys that is going to be the Louis van Gaal 95 tactic broken down I hope you guys have enjoyed it if you have be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to save yourself a little bit of time I do appreciate anyone that does watch the video and watch how the tactic does break down but you can download it from the FM Scout website but that is going to be it for me today guys and I will see you in the next one